Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can run a path analysis in the AMOS based on summary matrix input data. And the reason why I am covering this topic is because there may be times when you wish to perform a path analysis and the only information you have available is summary data such as mean, standard deviations, and correlations among your variables. So a good example um, of a case where that might occur is if you're reading a research report and you uh, see that the authors have tested a path model and you want to either re reproduce the analysis or uh, test competing models. Well, typically when you're reading a research report, the only information you will have available to you is summary data instead of the raw data and so uh, knowing how to uh, input that data into uh, into uh, Amos and run it run your model is a good um, tool to have at your disposal now I do want to mention that uh, ideally if you were performing secondary data analysis you would be using the raw data because then you could take into account issues related to outliers or non-normality or non-linearities but again if you don't have access to the original data then this can be this can still be a useful tool for you in your secondary data analysis now for this demonstration uh, I do want to mention that there are some additional files that you can actually download uh, underneath the video uh, at the links that are provided underneath the video description so uh, the first is a PowerPoint that accompanies this presentation a second is an SPSS data file that contains the summary information that I'm going to be covering and then the third is an Amos file that contains a path diagram so for this demonstration I am going to assume that you already know how to draw out a path diagram using the Amos drawing program so let's go ahead and talk about the example. Um, basically, we're going to be pivoting off of uh, the summary data that's provided in this article. We have table one with means and standard deviations, and table two that contains the correlations among a set of variables. And uh, I'm actually a co-author on this uh, article. This is from 2011. Uh, entitled Need for Closure, Achievement Goals, and Cognitive Engagement in High School Students. And so our example is going to pivot off of the final model that's presented, um, which looks like this. And uh, so in this model, we have preference for structure and preference for certainty serving as exogenous variables, uh, deep processes, deep processing and shallow processing serving as our endogenous outcome variables and then we have mastery goals uh, in this uh, model serving as a mediator of needs for closure on processing processing and um, then we also have performance approach goals and performance avoidance goals uh, they were originally specified as mediators but um, those paths from uh, performance approach and avoidance goals to processing uh, were not significant they were actually trimmed out so for the sample size we're going to assume 341 so we'll begin by talking about the SPSS data um, and how to you know how this is set up uh, for input into Amos. So first off, let's talk about the variables in this data set right here. You'll notice that we have row type with an underscore. This is actually a string variable reflected by that designation right there. Then we have uh, var name with an underscore and it's also a string variable right here. So just keep in mind that for both of these variables the underscore uh, is directly following uh, the E so there's no space that's involved. You'll notice uh, we also have variables of structure, certainty, mastery, performance approach, performance avoidance, uh, shallow and deep that are given right here. Now in row one you'll see that we have an N and this is referring to the sample size so for each of these variables I have 341 uh, that's uh, given so all the way through uh, the deep variable right there. In row two, we are giving the means based off of what's presented in those uh, in table one. So you can see we have the mean for structure, the mean for certain, uh, the mean for mastery all the way through deep. Uh, then we have the standard deviations that are given in row three and it's spelled STDDEV. So make sure that you spell that correctly. Uh, so now you can see I'm giving the standard deviations that were given in our table one. Then, starting with row 4 all the way through row 10 right here, you can see 
uh, that we're giving the correlation matrix or inputting the correlation matrix. So under var name, we're giving the variable names themselves, and these need, these have to correspond exactly with the spelling of our variables that are given up here. So make sure that's the case. Uh, under row type, you'll see that we are um, we are uh, providing values that that read C O R R, and so we do that for each of the variables uh, that we are uh, that we're um, providing as values under the var name variable. And so then you can see we have a correlation matrix. So along the principal diagonal, we have ones that are given. And then along, and then basically on the off diagonal or the lower triangle, we have the correlations among the variables which were given in Table Two. Okay, so how do we set this up? Well, I'm going to open up uh, a new SPSS file and show you that uh, at the bottom we have a little toggle here between Data View and Variable View, and I'm going to go under Variable View, and for our first variable name, we're going to type in row type with an underscore. Now when we hit enter, we're going to hear a little uh, sound. It's just basically saying, hey, um, some names uh, that end in underscore are special variables in SPSS. So um, it's just checking to make sure this little uh, message is checking to make sure that you understand that. I'm going to click on OK right there and where it says type, I'm, there's a little uh, button, kind of hidden button at the right. I'm going to click on string right there and then click on OK. Then on the next uh, row, we'll type in V-A-R-N-A-M-E underscore. Again, that is a special type of variable in SPSS, so it's just letting us know again. I'll click on OK. And then uh, for that type, we're going to set it to string. Now we're going to have to enter the variable names uh, under this. And so right now it's got eight characters. So if, if there are more than eight characters associated with your variable names, uh, then it's not going to allow you to do that. So I'm actually just going to expand this a bit up to 12 uh, to make sure that that's all covered. Then we start entering the actual variable names um, that are given in the data set. So we'll start off with structure, then we'll type in certain that's uh, next right there, and then we'll type in uh, mastery, P-A-P-P-R for performance approach, P-A-V-D for performance avoidance, shallow, and then deep right there. And um, then we go under data view, now we can start entering the information. So uh, in row one, we'll type in one, uh, N right there, and then we'll type in um, the sample size, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste this for each of our variables. And by the way, I do wanna mention that I, I know that in the first data set uh, that I was kind of showing you right here, the row type, var name, uh, those were in all caps, it, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, that uh, if they're in caps or not, as long as you've spelled them correctly and you've included that underscore. So next up, we'll uh, go down to the next row and we'll type in mean. Again, it doesn't really have to be in all caps right there, but I'll just type in mean right there. And then we'll start typing in the, the means for each of our variables based off of the values that were presented in table one. So for structure, it was 3.65. For certain, uh, the mean was 3.41. For mastery, it was 4.11 and so forth. Then following that, we'll go down to our next row and we'll type in STD, DEV. Again, they don't have to all be in caps as long as you just spelled it correctly. And then we'll start typing in the standard deviations for our variables. Uh, again, this is based off of the information in, in uh, table one. So the standard deviation for uh, the structure variable was 0.9. For certain, it was 0.99. Uh, we have 1.12 for mastery, 1.16 for performance approach and so forth. Okay, so then we'll, we will start entering in the correlation uh, data. So under var name, this is where we want to uh, include the names that, as they appear uh, in, in uh, as the variables that, that we see in the data set. So you can see right here, we've got structure, certain, mastery, uh, performance approach and so forth. So right here, I'm gonna type in structure then certain right here, then mastery, P-A-P-P-R for per, per, performance approach, P-A-V-D 
then shallow and deep. So make sure that those are spelled exactly the same way as the variables appear in the data set. Then we'll type in C-O-R-R -R right here and I'll do this for each of the variables. Okay, so then from there it's just a matter of entering the, the uh, correlation matrix. And so I'll spare you the typing. I just went ahead and copied and pasted these in from the previous uh, spreadsheet. And so I'll go ahead and save this uh, file. I'll just call it demo right there. And then we'll open up Amos and run the analysis. Okay, so here's our uh, path diagram and we'll, uh, we'll just uh, go ahead and input the data. So in this case, we will go into the correct folder and select uh, our file and click on open and OK right there. And we'll go under analysis properties right here. And, um, you know, we, uh, if you want to estimate means and intercepts, you can. If you don't, uh, there's, you don't really need to. In this case, we're not going to bother with that. We're going to click on output. And some of the uh, things that I've selected include standardized estimates, squared multiple correlations. If I want uh, indirect, direct, and total effects, there they are. The indirect effects are actually the total indirect effects in the model. Uh, you can request residual moments, uh, modification indices, and and, uh, and so forth. And then under uh, bootstrap, if it's the case that I want to, uh, let's say I want to uh, bootstrap those indirect effects, um, and I only have summary data that's provided, uh, if uh, but I can actually perform bootstrap tests for those indirect effects uh, by using this Monte Carlo parametric bootstrap option. So you'll see right here that I've clicked on perform bootstrap. I've selected 2000 samples, uh, bias corrected confidence intervals. I've set this at 95%. And then under Monte Carlo, I've clicked on uh, Monte Carlo parametric bootstrap. I've clicked uh, that button right there. So this, uh, this bootstrapping option is useful in those cases where you, where you want to test um, you know those those indirect effects within the model so at this point what we'll do is we will run the analysis so I've already kind of saved the final model and I'm gonna go ahead and click on calculate estimates right there and you'll notice uh, I'll do a click on that uh, button right there uh, these are the unstandardized estimates within the model these are the standardized estimates within the model and when we click on this little button right here, this is a view text. We can look at the output file. The model fit, you can see, is, is actually uh, very good. Um, you'll see that we have the chi-square uh, goodness of fit test. There's your degrees of freedom and your p-value that's given. Uh, the GFI and AGFI are well above 0.9. Um, and TLI and CFI are both indicating uh, obviously very good fit. Both of those are well above uh, 0.9. As we scroll down, you can see right here the RMSEA that's given as well as uh, the 90% the, um, confidence interval for the RMSEA and P-close. So I'll talk some, about more of this in the, um, in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I do want to mention too that the reason why this is fitting so well is because uh, that model had been was not the original model that was tested, but it was a, a re-specified model. Um, so it's 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 not a surprise that it fits the data really really well um, so just kind of keep that in mind we'll go under estimates right here you can see that we have our uh, path coefficients so these are the unstandardized path coefficients that are given as well as there's our uh, standard errors um, and then our z values and then the p values associated with each of the paths you can see that uh, all the paths were statistically significant uh, at the conventional 0 0.05 level and then you've got your standardized uh, path coefficients that are given right here in this column as we scroll down a little bit further you can see that we have our covariances um, First, you have the covariance between the structure and certain variables. These are exogenous variables, and that was significant. And then there were um, some of those, um, there were actually some uh, covariances among disturbance terms, which uh, kind of going back here, uh, you didn't see those in the actual path diagram within the article, but they were uh, specified. So that's why those coefficients are shown 
uh, right there. And then you've got correlations, again, between the exogenous uh, structure in certain variables. There's the correlation of 0.2 and correlations among the disturbance terms. And then you've got the squared multiple correlations associated with each of the endogenous variables in the model. Um, you'll see below we've got, uh, you know, again, residual uh, matrices, and then we've got our various uh, total effects, indirect effects, and direct effects. Uh, I typically just like to go under estimates here and go under uh, matrices right here. Uh, when we click on this, you can go directly to those uh, tables. So uh, if I want to go to indirect effects right there, you can see that we have the total indirect effects of certain on on um, on the shallow variable and certain on deep variable right there and the total indirect effect of structure on shallow and deep that's given right there. Um, if I want the confidence interval for those indirect effects I can click on bootstrap confidence down here and so now you've got uh, essentially the lower bound in this case of certain on uh, shallow and then the upper bound that's given right there uh, and then also the lower bound for certain on deep and certain on uh, and the upper bound right here and then you've also got those lower and upper bounds for the confidence intervals related to structure um, on each of our outcome variables. So I know I'm kind of going blow by blow here uh, pretty quickly but there's a little bit more description on what uh, what's going on in the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so that um, pretty well wraps up this uh, video demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.